The Solitary Reaper by William Wordsworth William Wordsworth was a major English romantic poet who, along with Samuel Taylor Coleridge, helped to launch the Romantic Age in English literature with their joint publication, The Lyrical Ballads. He is known as a great lover and preacher of nature and impresses us by the imaginative and philosophical quality of his thoughts. Romantic poetry exhibits a strong connection with medievalism and mythology, melancholy and altered states of consciousness. The most popular theme is countryside or pastoral poetry. The solitary reaper whisks us to the beautiful scenic highlands of Scotland. The speaker is walking around and sees a Scottish lady tending to her crops or reaping. She is singing in a field while she works. It is a kind of a sad song, but it is definitely more thrilling than a cuckoo's song in the Hebrides and different than anything you might hear from a nightingale. The speaker loves the song, but he can't understand any of it. He wonders if she is singing about old battles and other sad things from forever ago, or she is singing about something more humble. Either way, he notes that she is singing as if her song will never end. He watches, enraptured, not moving at all. At the end, he quietly walks away, keeping the woman's music in his heart for a long time after. The poem is a short lyrical ballad composed of 32 lines and divided into four stanzas. The stanzas are written in a tight iambic tetrameter. Each follows a rhyme scheme of A, B, A, B, C, C, D, D. It is dominated by one main figure, a highland girl standing alone in a field harvesting grain. It is written in the first person and can be classified as a pastoral poem, which means describing a scene from a country or village life. Its style of narration conveys immediacy of personal experience giving the impression that the poet did not merely imagine but actually lived the scene. We immediately conjure up a picture of a sparsely populated rural area exactly what the highlands of Scotland were like in the early 1800s. Behold her single in the field Yon solitary highland lass? The poet tells us about a young girl of Scotland. He tells us to look at the girl who is reaping grain and also singing a sweet song. She is solitary or all alone. This makes us aware about the hushed atmosphere of the valley. She is a highland lass. Scotland was divided into lowlands and highlands. That isn't just a geographical issue, but a cultural one too. Reaping and singing by herself. Stop here or gently pass. She is reaping grain and also singing a sweet song all alone. The poet is so mesmerized and elated by the singing that he does not want it to end. If he stops or passes by, she might see him and stop singing. He advises the passers-by to stop and listen to her song or pass very silently so that she is not disturbed. He is moved by her song and feels that they might be moved too. Alone she cuts and binds the grain and sings a melancholy strain. The poet says that the highland girl cuts and binds the grain in sheaves. She is also singing a sad song. She is very busy in her song as well as in her work. 
The speaker now gives us more details about what is going on. She is cutting some kind of grain and tying it all together. Binds. The song she is singing isn't a very happy one. It is a melancholy strain. Oh, listen, for the wail profound is overflowing with the sound. The poet once again advises the passers-by to listen to her song. The whole valley, which is magnificent and great, is echoing with it, is listening to her sweet voice. It is full to the brim with the sound of the woman's song. The poet introduces us to the subject of the poem, The Solitary Reaper, cutting grain and singing a melancholy strain, single, solitary, by herself and alone, emphasize the girl's solitude. The act of reaping alone in the field binds the girl intimately to the earth. As she sings and the melody fills the lonely valley, she becomes almost completely merged with nature. She sings a morose, gloomy song while she cuts and binds the sheaves of grain. It seems to the poet as if the surrounding valley is brimming over with the song of the reaper. Poetic Devices Apostrophe A figure of speech where the speaker of the poem addresses a dead or absent person, an abstraction or an inanimate object. Behold her single in the field, yon solitary highland lass, and stop here or gently pass. Although the reader is not present, the speaker's imperative to behold the girl at her work puts the reader vicariously in the company of the speaker as if they were walking the highlands together. Second, he advises the reader to either stop and listen to the song or just pass by quietly. Inversion when the normal order of words is reversed in order to achieve a particular effect of emphasis or meter. Example, alone she cuts and binds the grain is hyperbole involves an exaggeration of ideas for the sake of emphasis. Oh, listen, for the veil profound is overflowing with the sound. Antithesis is a rhetorical device in which two opposite ideas are put together in a sentence to achieve a contrasting effect. Stop here or gently pass, cuts and binds. No nightingale did ever chaunt, more welcome notes to weary bands of travellers in some shady haunt among Arabian sands. The poet compares the sweet voice of the girl to that of a nightingale. So far, no nightingale has sung a song as melodious as the girl sings. When a group of tired travellers reaches a shady place in the Arabian deserts, the nightingale welcomes a tired caravan with its sweet song. The voice of the singing girl is sweeter than that of a nightingale. Wordsworth has consciously chosen the nightingale the best singing bird only to make us aware about the superiority of the song of the solitary reaper. A voice so thrilling never was heard in springtime from the cuckoo bird breaking the silence of the seas among the farthest Hebrides. A comparison between the song of the girl and the song of the cuckoo is made. It was so sweet that it broke the silence of the seas and of the far-off islands and northwestern coast of Scotland. These islands are never disturbed by any storm, but the praiseworthy song of the girl intruded into their silence. The words of the song are in a language unknown to him, but he remains transfixed by the melody, which seems to stretch the limits of time and space. He associates the sweetness of the reaper's song with the beautiful cries of the nightingale and the cuckoo, familiar images in romantic poetry. Alliteration is a repetition of similar sounds. No nightingale, some shady, among Arabian are examples. A metaphor is an implied or hidden comparison between two things that are unrelated but share some common characteristics. The solitary reaper's song has been compared with the song of the nightingale. 
hyperbole breaking the silence of the seas is an exaggeration therefore a high will no one tell me what she sings perhaps the plaintive numbers flow for old unhappy far off things and battles long ago the poet does not understand the alien language of the song of the girl he tries to interpret it and wonders whether anyone will tell him the meaning he speculates that the girl is probably singing some plaintive numbers which means mournful or sad songs of a distant past or some old unhappy far off thing perhaps she is singing about battles which have been fought a long time ago he further wonders whether the song has something to do with the day to day life of the solitary reaper he thinks that she might be singing about grief and sadness which has occurred and might return or is it some more humbly familiar matter of today some natural sorrow loss or pain that has been and may be again the speaker continues to ponder over the woman's song the language of the song seems incomprehensible he wonders if a song is more humbly or something more familiar or day to day he tries to guess the theme perhaps she is singing a simple song on some ordinary matter of the present age or singing about a simple sorrow of loss or of some misery he is really sure only about one thing the woman's song is a sad one probably the incident of loss or pain has taken place in the past and it may be experienced again in the future as he allows the song to engulf his consciousness he envisions far off places in times of long ago his imagination transports him from the field in which he stands to the edge of infinity whatever the theme the maiden sang as if her song could have no ending i saw her singing at her work and over the sickle bending the poet did not know the theme of the song irrespective of that it seemed that the song of the young girl would never come to an end could have no ending makes it sound like the song isn't designed to ever end like some definitive song that is a fact of life the poet says that he saw the girl busy at her work and also singing even while she was working bending over her sickle which is a special farming tool used for cutting crops i listened motionless and still and as i mounted up the hill the music in my heart i bore long after it was heard no more the poet listened to her song standing still and motionless the reaper is unaware of the speaker's presence so the effect her song has had on him as he mounted up the hill of scotland the sweet tune of the song struck his heart he continues to listen but the transcendent moment is past as he walks away from the field the song fades from his hearing but its plaintive melody echoes in his heart and his imagination he was so impressed that he carried the melody of the song with him long after it was ended the speaker is experiencing a transcendental moment through the expression he is motionless and still means that he is daydreaming He seems to be looking back on the scene rather than presenting it as it unfolds. He has re-entered the stream of time. The daydream is now over and he is moving forward with his life, mounting the hill and continuing his journey. Inversion has been used in and over the sickle bending and the music in my heart I bore. The solitary reaper is about the power of imagination to transform common everyday events into representations of a larger reality to express an abstract idea using concrete images The reaper becomes a spiritual gateway for the poet the natural environment heightens her mystery her song becomes an articulation of the eternal the boundless the ultimate reality this intuitive impression of the infinite makes him a different person her song permeates his intellect and lingers in his heart for a long time